A gearbox enables you to move your boat forward, stop the boat or go into reverse. That's why gearboxes are sometimes called reversing gears or clutches. Typically they're very reliable bits of kit, but if you have a problem with your gearbox, you can't move your boat. Sailors also need to take additional care of the gearbox, because while sailing the gearbox can get additional wear and tear. So in this presentation we're going to look at the inside of a gearbox, how does it work, how to take good care of your gearbox, how to change gears. We will look at a common issue, well a common, sometimes it happens that a gearbox is stuck in forward or reverse gear, and with a bit of luck you can solve that yourself on your boat. During the presentation we will also give hints and tips on how to take good care of your gearbox, so it gives you many hours of trouble-free operation. There are two main families of gearboxes. On engines up to about 80-90 horsepower, typically a mechanical gearbox is fitted. They are strong, sturdy, small and very reliable. You should operate a mechanical gear with mechanical cables and they take a little bit of force to go from forward to neutral to reverse. They are also on off switches, you are either in forward or in neutral gear, so they can respond a bit clunky. You feel a clunk, you hear a thump and then your boat starts moving. Larger boats are typically fitted with hydraulic gearboxes. Hydraulic gearboxes shift incredibly smoothly and you can operate them with electronics control with electronic controls to give you that fingertip control over your boat. Now if you have a large boat with an efficient propeller, typically it moves too fast in forward gear. Hydraulic clutches can be fitted with a trolling valve and that enables you to basically go at any speed from zero to full power making maneuvering much, much easier. So you can travel at any speed you want. Now, typically, if you look at the back of the en engine, you can see uh, the size of your gearbox. If it's a lot smaller than the size of your engine, typically it's a mechanical gearbox. You can also recognize them be because of the stiff mechanical cables that operate them. Hydraulic gearboxes tend to be a lot bigger and have hydraulic hoses run into a cooler because the hydraulic oil needs to be cooled. Typically they are operated with electronic wires, so normal electrical wires running between them. It's not a must, but those are the easy ways to discover if you have a mechanical or an electronic, sorry, a hydraulic gearbox. Sometimes a gearbox gets stuck in forward or aft gear. Now with a bit of luck you can release the gears on your boat. We will look at the inside of a gearbox and that will also explain why during sailing you should switch the gearbox into reverse to pre prevent additional wear and tear. Now, In order to do that I'm going to change the angle of the camera. The camera in the next slide will look down on the table and I've placed an, uh, a gearbox there. Now we've cut a hole in this gearbox so we can look at the inside. Normally this is bolted to the back of your engine. This is the intake shaft where your engine power is uh, transfers to the gearbox. This is the output shaft. Normally there's a flexible coupling here and the flexible coupling dampens shifting sounds. It also dampens vibrations and after the um, flexible coupling you will have the prop shaft, the propeller shaft going to the propeller. This is the lever that changes gears. So your throttle control on your helm station controls this lever. If you go forward, you switch in this direction. If you want to go aft, in the other direction. And this is the neutral position. Now, how does a gearbox operate? As soon as I start the engine, this shaft starts turning. And this shaft is connected to two gears. This gear is moving opposite of the direction of my propeller shaft. This gear is moving with the propeller shaft and it is done, it is driven by a third gear which is hidden out of view here. So this gear is turning the additional gear, that additional gear is turning this gear. So on the bottom shaft I've got two gears, one turning against the engine direction, one turning in the direction of the engine. This is where my propeller shaft is and on the propeller shaft we have the clutch cone in the middle. I will move this gear a bit out of sight, the lever out of sight. This is the clutch cone and if I rotate the propeller, the clutch cone also rotates. And the clutch cone can move left and right. Now if I push the clutch cone against this gear, it's going to rotate into the same direction as this gear and propel the propeller shaft. First in neutral, start the engine. So if I move the clutch cone in this direction, and I do that by the way by moving the lever in this direction, the clutch cone heads in that direction, I will shift into 
aft gear, sorry, forward gear. Back to neutral, so engine turning with the propeller shaft is stationary. Into aft gear, my propeller is now turning in the same direction as my engine. Now, so the bottom shaft is doing all of the hard work. I'm going to remove this clutch and put just the bottom shaft inside. So this is the lower shaft with the two gears turning in opposite directions, the clutch cone in the middle, and this is the output shaft to my propeller shaft. So if I shift, I'm moving the clutch cone against either this gear or that gear. Now in between is a bit of friction material to make sure that it becomes a solid hole turning the propeller shaft in the desired direction. Now the clutch cone operates in two ways. The first one is of course if I shift my engine, sorry the gearbox, I'm pressing it either against this gear or the other gear. At the same time if I rotate my propeller shaft my clutch cone is moving left or right. So if I'm moving the, plush, the propeller shaft, turning it, this bit, the cone, also moves in or out. And that enables me to shift, to change gears from forward to aft to neutral with a small amount of power. Because if my propeller, my engine is turning, I'm shifting, pressing this one into the gear. As soon as my prop shaft is turning, it is also pressing that gear into this gear. So with a small amount of power I'm doing the first bit of shifting and then the motion of the propeller shaft takes over basically turning this into a solid hole. So now my engine is propelling my prop shaft and the prop shaft in its turn is pushing the clutch cone into the gear. Now in reverse exactly the same thing happens except with the other gear and now my propeller shaft is pulling the cone into this gear. Now that explains why it's so necessary to shift with low RPM. Put the engine in neutral for two or three seconds, the engine slows down, the gears turn slowly, so all of the shifting takes happens at a slow speed as well. But if these turn very rapidly and you shift, that gear is snapped into place. It's not just your engine RPM, make sure that your propeller shaft is moving slowly as well. If your boat is moving at a high speed, the propeller is now turning the prop shaft, which is turning all of those gears, and that will give you a clunky motion as well. So take the speed out of the boat, give it a couple of seconds to slow down, and then you can go from forward to aft to neutral gear, and the other way around. Now, if you have a folding propeller, you want those blades to go into the closed position where you have that streamlined shape, which saves you about half to a full knot of speed. So make sure that the blades are closed on a folding propeller. Now what can happen is, your engine is on, you've hoisted the sails, the sails are now propelling the boat, and there's so much speed in the boat that the blades, because of the centrifugal force, stay open. So you switch off the engine, you keep it in neutral, the propeller is now spinning so fast that the blades don't close, they're forced outward due to centrifugal force. Now to stop the propeller from turning, momentarily go into reversed gear, the blades now stop, they close and then you have that streamlined shape and you can go to neutral. With a hydraulic gearbox you have to make sure that you go into reverse before you switch off the engine. A hydraulic gearbox needs hydraulic pressure to operate and the hydraulic pressure is generated by your ship's engine. So on a hydraulic gearbox, before you switch off the engine, go into reverse, the blades will now close, switch off the engine so the gearbox stays in reverse gear and the blades are now completely closed. And that will make sure that you can get that additional speed from your boat. In this presentation we've discussed the inside working of a gearbox, we've shown you why it's so important to make sure the RPMs are low when you shift from both the engine and the propeller shaft. We've looked at uh, an issue that sometimes arises where a gearbox is stuck into forward or neutral gear. Why maintenance is so important, make sure that you refresh your lubricating oil to get rid of all of the small particles, all of the wear particles in there. Um, I want to thank you for your time and attention and I wish you all a wonderful sailing season.